In this video, you'll learn how to add a vapor cloud explosion and a sampling grid to Breeze XDAM in preparation for a modeling run. We've created this one building, but we don't have any scale. It's very difficult to know the dimensions unless you remember that we made this a 10 by 20 meter building. So first thing we'll do is turn on under grid, this base grid section, which is available from any of these tabs. You have this base grid control. We'll just check the display box. That's going to show us a basic coordinate grid just to make it easier to work with everything. So this building starts at X coordinate zero and Y coordinate zero, so zero, zero here. So let's say that we want to model the effects of an explosion that's off in this direction. So the X coordinate, we'll, we'll just make it centered on the building. So we'll put the X coordinate for the center of the vapor cloud at 10, X equals 10. And then let's make, let's put this, the vapor cloud 100 meters away from the building, from the front face of the building. So if I want it to be in this direction, I want the center point to be at negative 100 for the Y coordinate. So to do that, under new vapor cloud here, first I can set the coordinates for the center point of the vapor cloud here. We'll just leave Z at zero, X, as I said, is going to be 10, and Y, we're going to make that negative 100. Then we can edit the fuel type. Let's say this is an ethylene vapor cloud. Just set that to ethylene. The program automatically loads the properties of uh, an ethylene vapor cloud here. Next, we'll set the mass. Let's say we have a 5,000 kilogram ethylene vapor cloud. I set that. Then the explosion strength parameter. Let's say that this ethylene is a highly reactive vapor, so it tends to create strong explosions. And let's say that it's in a congested environment, like a process unit that has a lot of piping in it. So explosion strength eight would be an appropriate value there. So we'll set that to explosion strength eight. Next, I'll create a vapor cloud as individual subclouds, meaning that one vapor cloud can have many different subclouds that make it up. This allows you to create a vapor cloud shape that's not just a simple sphere or a circle. You can have a, an unusual shape. Each vapor cloud will be a sphere or a hemisphere, but the combined effect of all of the vapor subclouds will create a vapor cloud that's not just a simple circle. But this is a, we're doing a simple demonstration here, so let's just, we'll only create one vapor subcloud and we will have that, so the whole vapor cloud will just be one spherical vapor cloud here. So if I have VC selected for the vapor cloud, the vapor subcloud coordinates, that means that these are the coordinates relative to the center point of the vapor cloud. So if I leave X, Y, and Z set to zero, then this will just place this new vapor subcloud at these coordinates. So it's the X, Y, and Z here are relative because I have VC vapor cloud coordinates set. The X, Y, and Z values are relative to the main vapor cloud coordinates. So with those values specified, I can just click the add button, zoom out, and you can see here we have our vapor cloud. Now a vapor cloud can be moved just like any other object in XDAM, just like how we moved building walls by holding down the control key and then clicking and dragging. You can do the same thing with this vapor cloud. So let's say instead of the center point being, instead of the base being at ground level and the center point being elevated, if I want this to be more of a hemisphere rather than just a sphere, I can just click and drag on the vapor cloud. And now we have the same volume of cloud, but it's just been shifted to be a hemisphere. I just clicked and dragged to slide it down rather than having it be an elevated sphere. 
And again, hold control, click and drag to do that. Okay, so now I have my building. I have a vapor cloud. The next step will be to create a sample grid. So this is going to create the grid that defines where the model will calculate results. This is defined based on the origin. So that's defining one corner of the grid and then the length in the x, y, and z directions. So let's say that we want this to take the z dimension, the height dimension first, the grid to cover up to 40 meters vertically. I can set this length z to 40, and the origin z will be zero, meaning the grid starts at ground level and goes up 40 meters in the air. Now for the x origin, I want to cover, I want the X origin to be basically the smallest X coordinate that I want the grid to cover. So let's say I want the grid to start at X equals negative 40. So the grid will start somewhere around here. I'll set origin X to minus 40. Then if I want the Y grid to start at minus Y equals 150, I can set minus 150 as the y origin. So now, so the grid will have a corner here at x equals negative 40, y equals negative 150. Now I set the length in the x and y directions. So if I want in the x direction, I want this to start at negative 40 and go to say plus 50 meters. So negative 40 to plus 50, the x length should be 90. Then in the y dimension, the grid starts at negative 150. If I want it to extend to positive 20, then the total length from negative 150 to positive 20 should be 170 meters. I've set this so I'll create a grid that has the origin, so one corner at negative 150y, negative 40x, and zero z and it extends 90 meters in the x direction, 170 meters in the y direction, and 40 meters in the z direction. The last thing I need to set are the divisions. This will define the number of grid points on each side of the grid. Total length is 90 meters, so if I want a point every five meters, if I set this to 19, that will create 19 grid points in this direction. The y length, is 170 meters, so to get five meter spacing there, I'm going to need a larger number of grid points. Set 35 for the Y grid points. And then in the vertical, let's just go ahead and leave 10 vertical divisions. So now click add. So now we've created a grid that starts at negative 40X, negative 150y and extends out to cover the entire modeled area and you can see the density of the grid here. I can move and edit this grid just like I can move or edit anything else in the program. So for example if I want to see any shielding effects from this building I might want to extend this grid a little bit farther in the y direction. So to do that, I can just zoom in on the far end of the grid. To edit, remember, we use Control shift So if I hold down Control shift and click on this edge, then I can just drag to stretch the grid out. So now this covers a longer distance. All right, so now I've created a structure with some people inside. Then I created a vapor cloud. And lastly, this sample grid. So now just go ahead and save this project. And I can do that by the B button, save as, or I can just click here on this save as button and call this VC test, vapor cloud test, click save. So now the 
title will show up here. And now we are ready to run the model. Be sure to check out our other videos to see the other parts of the modeling process and consult the help manual for additional guidance.